Hi everybody, Hellcrax here, and welcome to another episode of Mercenary Thoughts from the Inner Sphere, episode 189. And today we're going to be talking about the Albatross. That's from House Merrick Free World League. That uh, was designed to go out there and help take on the clans. Well, would it last very long against the clans? Let's just find out. Yeah. Well, the Albatross is 95 tons. So, to be honest with you, if you had a choice between the 3.5 moving Banshee and this thing, you might be better off with the Banshee with the standard engine. That's slower. Yep. Now, Albatross, 95 tons, has a 380XL engine in it. So, it saves a lot of tonnage. And for that XL engine. So, yeah, with all that extra time, you'd think this thing would be, well, pretty decent. It's a 4.6.0, so it doesn't have any jump jets. But typically, putting jump jets on a mech this heavy is not really necessary. Because, well, it's nice, but that's a lot of tonnage. It has 14 heat sinks that are double. Well, that's a good deal. So, at least they put double heat sinks on this thing and with an XL engine. Well, we know what the XL engine does for life expectancy, but let's just see. Well, obviously, if you got a mech that has an XL engine, you got to throw as much armor on it as possible to keep it alive. No, not really. You put 13 tons on it, which is 208, which is rating down to around what you're going to find on a 60, 65 ton mech, typically. Yep. So, it's sadly lacking in the armor department. You know, this thing could be running around with, what, another three tons? No, four tons, easily. And you look at it, typically, yeah, six, uh, three, three and a half tons. You can go with three and a half more tons. Yeah, had to think there for a second. Now, it has some interesting weapons loadout. It has an LBX-10 with two tons of ammo in the left torso and the cannon is in the left arm all right has case in the left and right torso say hey at least that's good so if your mech blows up from an ammo explosion at least the pilot's going to stay alive you're just going to lose the mech because it's going to take three engine hits it carries around an er large laser in the left torso so yeah that's not bad Kind of like I like the ER la large lasers. Eh, it brings a little bit to the table. Then we have an LRM-15 in the right torso. All right, with two tons of ammo in the right torso. Obviously, there's the case there. And then we have an SRM-6 in the right torso with a ton of ammo. And then in the right arm, we have a large. Yes, a large pulse laser and two medium lasers. Well, it does have a lot of weapons. But you can't fire them all at one time. You're going to barbecue yourself because, hey, let's just look at it. Say we got 12, uh, 16, 22, 32, 34, what was that, 39, something like that. Yeah, so you're going to go up way up on the heat scale. So, if you fired everything at one time. I suppose if you're sitting there facing off against a clan mech and it might be your last chance of uh, dishing anything out before they core you through or take your torso out. Yeah, maybe. You know, go for broke. But if you're doing that, you're probably already in a bad shape already. So, you know, that's what I got to say about that. Now... What do I've used this mech quite a few times over the years, you know? And I got mine is painted up here in House Steiner colors. That, hey, they sold one to him. To hey, you got need something to stem the tide of the clan, so let's just buy one on the market through nefarious means, through back channels, and got it. You know, so yeah, that's how I basically I envisioned that happening. But the. Uh, well, my biggest problem with it is, is I'm always a, a person that likes to have my weapons set up into range band blocks. You know, it's like I'll fire this in this block, short range of these weapons in this 
range or long range weapons. So I like the idea of being able to fire most of my long range weapons at one time and then turn around and fire almost all my short range stuff at one time with maybe one or two of the long range weapons being tossed into the, the ring there. But this one, you know, you got the LBX, the uh, ER Large, and the LRM. So you're looking at uh, range bands that, you know, it's not really reaching out there. 21 with your LRM. So that's not a long range. So if you're facing off against clans that have some ER Large lasers, they're going to plug holes through this thing pretty quickly. And that's one of the problems i have because this is where you know i play used it and and like you say gen con or origins before and and you're looking at the battlefield like well, okay they just gave us a flat open area with hardly any cover and concealment and you're trying to run across and and everybody's like hey that's an albatross that's got xl engines with no armor now next thing your focus fired and it's like oh my mech's gone and i never even got to fire it because i wasn't even in range yet because they hit me with all this long range stuff and that was one of the problems. It's like all they did was take out a torso and it's like, hey, hey, you know, put it in a dead pile. And you know, and to be honest, being a four six moving mech with XL engines versus a three five mech without it XL engines, the three five really isn't losing much. You know, you're losing uh one movement point here and there but you're not gaining anything when it comes to modifiers when it comes to movement so really a, a 95 ton mech there's really to be honest with you there's not much you really need the xl engine for on a mech that heavy you're better off with just a standard engine at a slower mech you're going to gain pretty much the same thing uh, with it you know that's my experience now one thing this mech does pretty well though is you know when it does get close enough you start pounding away personally you know with that er large and the lrm those are kind of kind of a, almost a harassment style weapon you know you know you, one's doing eight points of damage the other one is going to possibly do up to 15 but in three five point blocks so that is almost like crit hunting in a way now really you, you do crit hunt is you using cluster munitions with that lbx and if you do find somebody with some armor that's been stripped off go ahead hammer them away with that uh, lbx cannon and go crit hunting and to be honest with you i think in some ways you're probably almost better off just thinking about it doing it one point shots also yeah, you're trying to get those head hits or those lucky crits. You know, it's like that floating crit that might uh, punch in some place and do some damage. So it's like you're kind of gambling around, you know, versus a 10-point shot or a cluster munition that, you know, you have a better shot, better chance of hitting because, you know, you got that minus right there. But then when you do get in close, you're going to have that SRM-6. And then you got uh, that large pulse laser and the medium lasers. And then you're still using the LBX cannon. You know, so those, you drop off the ER large. Uh, it's like you're looking at 6, 16, 20. And uh, yeah, you're looking easily, no, not worrying about any heat problems with it. Yeah, you, know, you could still fire the LRM-15 at a target that's not, within your minimum range at something a little bit farther that's in your arc that would probably be something i would do you know it's, it's still well balanced in that aspect of it is that the er large is going to be causing your heat problems you're basically giving up the er large for in favor of when you get close enough with that large pulse laser but a large intersphere large pulse laser you're, you're tossing seven tons into something that shoots 10 hexes and as much as I like the 10 points damage and the uh, minus two to hit, you're not, I personally, you're not really gaining much from it. You know, I, per, you know, I'd rather be honest with you, maybe switch that thing out for an ER, ER PPC and gain some more range in long range punching. 
So you combine that and or even dropping the LBX cannon in favor of that PP, yeah, flip the, the LBX cannon in favor of the, the PPC and take that extra tonnage. Hey, let's do that and throw it into armor. You know, you could throw in that three and a half more tons of armor and a couple more heat sinks and you know, you're probably better off than just with the LBX cannon. And you're also having a weapon that can shoot a little bit farther. And you don't have to worry about minimum ranges. So if you do want to fire it up close, you can do that if you want to. So there are some thoughts right there. Now, uh, when it comes to using it, I'll uh, keep uh, harping away. It's like you got to look at the battlefield when, when it comes to a mech like this and just try to figure out where it's covered and concealment can be found to keep it from getting hammered too hard. Because it, like I said earlier, this mech, when it's uh, noticed, or if you know what the Albatross carries with it for weaponry and armor and has XLs, uh, any good uh, commander on the other side is going to go, yeah, I'm going to focus on that thing and get it done. Because that's 95-ton mech that you can knock out of the game quickly. So you've got to look at uh, keeping into the woods, keeping the line of sight to the minimum, and trying to maximize that to your best ability and if you don't have a line of sight you still have the lrm 15 that can do some indirect fire if necessary that's the one nice thing about this mech is that it can do that it this is not really a master of anything type mech it is definitely a kind of a jack of all trades when it comes to uh, what it brings to the table so, all right, now let's see. There is a couple other variants on this mech. You got the 3UR. Uh, this version replaces the missile launchers with an MML9 and the autocannon large laser replaced with a Gauss rifle and a snub dose PPC. All right, so they don't mention anything about uh, taking care of, you know, obviously. You're combining the the auto cannon and the large laser. You're taking that tonnage to create the Gauss rifle, so you got to use more tonnage to put the Gauss rifle on versus the, uh, the auto cannon. So that's one place where you got to go. But you know, then the snub those PPC, yeah, it can do the job. Uh, to be honest with you, then then we got the the four U. Uh, variant of the, uh, the Albatross uh, basic design upgrade. This replaces the medium lasers with a pair of ER medium lasers. And that's kind of a logical one. So when you get farther downrange after uh, 30, 58, 60, somewhere in there when the ER medium lasers are available, sometimes they're a better option to throw on a mech. Not always, but sometimes they do. And the mech also replaces the LBX-10 with a light Gauss rifle. So you're not doing as much damage, but you're gaining some range. But, you know, there's a, a trade-off. And the SRM-6 has also been replaced with a Streak-6. Now, I am I do like the Streak-6, personally. Yet, with the Intersphere, it's taking a little more tonnage away from you. But you're gaining... Uh, probably a little bit more damage and that also once it locks on and fires all six are gonna hit and that does become kind of a crit hunting weapon system so there's not much to say that I dislike about that uh, system being put on there but uh, they keep doing the one thing is that you know obviously they want to replace the auto cannons with something that's still they're keeping a a weapon system that has lighter you know less heat you know so they can fire more weapons that makes sense but if you're looking at it in a logical way then the er medium lasers are not necessarily a great addition because you're actually adding more heat to the mech and for the additional three hexes so is that a trade-off you want to do you know that's you know kind of the thought process you got to go through what's your give and take now the battle value on this mech isn't bad you know you're talking there's in some cases you know you're looking at half the battle value of a lot of clan mechs so yeah you could bring one of these in and use it and if it, you know you actually you could almost bring two of these for the 
cost of some of these uh, say weight of assault mechs on the uh, the clan side of it and let's see okay then oh there's a custom mech here the dantalon which come out of the 49th uh shadow division hmm who would be the shadow division uh this one has a small cockpit with a laser and a missile system has a heavy gyro light fusion engine and so you don't have as many crits to be taken out so if you lose a torso it's not a dead mech so that's one thing and it does use heavy ferrofibrous armor and has guardian ecm and it uses an ERPPC, and it has a large laser also and it has the er medium lasers and medium pulse laser and it has a single er small laser and it has triple strength armor so obviously all those different weapon systems are designed to get that mech to heat up and then when it does get close it can kick somebody's leg off for that matter you're talking a 95 ton mech kicking somebody uh with triple spake uh strength mimer heated up Ooh, yeah the odds are that leg is gone <laughs> especially if it's a medium or even a heavy mech it's, it's probably going to lose that leg it's going to drop kick it and it's like you look at that and go i'm not getting near that guy <laughs> no way but yeah that is pretty much the albatross in a nutshell it's not one that's really a uh mech that's going to be you write home and say hey it's us i, I got to get one of these it's like better than sliced bread yeah it's not bad it can be it's not well you got to put it in this right role uh it's definitely one of those mechs that you don't want to be in the forefront by any stretch of the imagination because if you get this thing to the front where it is going to be focused on it's not long for the world you know it's going to be carrying up the rear with the gear and then when it does you know the battle's pretty much ensuing and everybody's looking at it it's like yeah uh the the art lower armor levels it might if it does not get noticed and later in the game it when it does get close with all those shorter range weapons yeah it can do some good work but if it gets noticed if you know what it is at longer ranges oh this thing is toast all right hope everybody likes this one like and subscribe you know if you do you have made it this far you know click the like button button you know that uh helps out the channel lets people know that it, you know you throw it into the, the uh analytics you know as it pops up and then if you see what you'll you know hear stuff that you like hey hit the subscribe button would you like to have you on on board and get into discussions all right all right, we'll talk to y'all later. Hell Craig's out.